So me and my buddy Timothy have basically became international. It's Raquel's turn to shine. God damn it, Raquel. Can you wait for the video to start? Oh, please. As if I have time for this. So me and my buddy Timothy have basically became international pen pals at this point, and we both decided to send each other yet another package from our respective countries. If you somehow missed the first video in the saga, I will leave a link down below. And also be sure to go check out Timothy's channel, where he's going to be uploading a video of him unboxing the package that I sent him as well. Now, Timothy sent me a lot of stuff, and I have it all sorted out in a particular order, so I'm going to be starting out Hey, with everybody! Get a load of me! I guess I'm going to be starting out by reviewing the loose dolls that he sent. So to start things off, Timothy sent me this older fashionista's Raquel head that he has rebodied on this blonde made to move Barbie's body from the tie-dye wave of made to move Barbie. This is actually my first Raquel Barbie. Um, not with the Raquel face mold, but of the Raquel character from Life in the Dream House. She's got this really cool dark gray eyeshadow that fits her character really well. And she also has this soft pink lip and her signature black hair. But this Raquel has these really cool pink highlights in her hair and I think that looks awesome. And Timothy let me know that the blonde Barbie from the tie-dye wave of Made to Move Barbies is a little bit lighter than the blonde Barbie from the floral wave, so that's good. I'm really happy that I have one of her to compare my other Barbies to now. And Timothy was so nice to make this gold glitter tube dress for me. I think it looks so pretty and it's on an elastic so it slips right over the doll. And he also sent me a couple Generation Girl Barbies including this one which I'm pretty sure is from one of the Barbie animated movies and also this newer one that has this really cool side eye. I really love this one's dress. I'm pretty sure it came off of one of the older fashionistas and look she has this really cute polar bear bag. There used to be this old obscure Russian cartoon that I had on VHS as a kid about a polar bear named Umka that gets lost in the snow. I used to watch it every Christmas. Does anybody else remember that cartoon? It feels like there's something in there. Wow, that is so cool. He's filled with all this authentic Australian coin currency. This is the strangest looking coin that I've ever seen. You see how it's faceted like that on the edges? We don't have this in America. I guess this is supposed to be Elizabeth II, and of course it's got kangaroos on the back. These are a lot thicker than American coins. He also sent me this, whoops. He also sent me the unicorn believer's head on this articulated body. Thank you very much for that. The one that he found has a lot less crooked face paint than the one that I unboxed. This is a really good skin tone match, but I have no idea who this body was originally from. Sharpay is here to end the Uchiha bloodline. And she's also rocking Scary Spice's outfit, which I surprisingly didn't already have because I love zebras. I feel like I should know where these shoes are from. He also sent me this gorgeous early 2000s fashion fever era Kayla. Or this might be Leia. I'm not sure. I almost want to rename her because I have this coworker who is a total bitch and her name just happens to be Kayla. I don't use that word lightly. She's actually deserving of a title. Yeah, the early 2000s definitely has to be my favorite era for Barbie. I mean, look at this facial screening. She looks so beautiful. And she also has these really cool sun streaks in her hair. It's like a dark brown, but it has these lighter brown highlights in it. I think that this hair fiber is called Konekalon because it's very dry and fluffy, almost like a feather. Timothy also sent me over this very rare European exclusive vintage Barbie that uses the beloved Steffi face sculpt. I love Steffi. She is so so sweet and I really wish that Mattel would bring her back but it really feels like she's one of the head sculpts that they kind of vaulted away. Now I'm not really sure what I want to do with her yet because her hairline is kind of miserable and the amount of hair is very lacking and her body is She's definitely been played with, so I might try to rebody her somehow. But I might just keep her original because there's no way that I'm gonna get another one of her. And she's also wearing this fashion fever outfit that I'm very thankful for because this is definitely my style. He also custom made me this really cool pair of elastic Ken pants that I'm really happy to have because I don't have a lot of Ken clothes and I'm very happy to add this to the wardrobe. They're like a purplish blue color and they're very shiny, almost holographic even. I love them. Now I'm kind of hungry. And just like last time, Timothy decided to send me over some exclusive Australian sweet treats, including these Kensington Pride Mango and Cream Tim Tams. And these seem to be a seasonal exclusive. Now I'm not gonna be doing a Tim Tam slam this time, but Timothy wanted to make sure that he got my full facial reaction to opening up this surprise doll that he has mummified beyond recognition on camera. What the hell? What the fuck? <laughs> Talk about mummification and Cleo Denial might have some sort of competition. All right, who is in here? It might take me half this video to unwrap this guy. It feels like a male doll. He's got pen and snap knees.
Oh my god. <laughs> it's Fearing Magic Ken. Thank you. Thank you. So, so. <laughs> I probably should have started with his feet and then worked my way up to his face. Oh no, the, the rap got caught on his earring. <laughs> he even has his little cock ring. Come on, come on. Almost. 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 <sighs> There we go. Now this is cool. This is awesome. Two gay icons. Oh, well, I guess. Three gay icons. I'm surprised that this leather material hasn't fallen apart. He's in really good condition. Um, I'm so happy to finally have this guy. Yeah, this is definitely the first gay Ken. Like, he's gay. Like, there's, there, there's no way. He looks like he came out of a gay club. Straight out of a gay club. He's, he just sucked five dicks and he's got the metal for prove it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Ooh, they almost look like dream sickles. They're really good. I mean, it's definitely an acquired taste. So if you like mangoes and cream, I'd definitely give this a try. I don't know. What do you think, Tiffany? <laughs> Wow, no wonder Australians like Tim Tams. Next up, we have some mint chocolate Tim Tams. Guys, I love mint chocolate, so... Let's just say they were good. And this is by the same company that makes Tim Tams. This is Arnott's Kingston's, which is one letter off from my last name. Now, these are sandwich cookies, and the best way that I can think of to describe the taste is... Imagine Keebler's wedding cookies, except with just a hint of chocolate. He also sent me over these Licorice Lover's Chocolate Licorice Sticks because I'm one of those psychopaths that actually loves black licorice. These look like extended Twix bars, but don't be fooled. If the smell doesn't give it away, these do taste very strongly of licorice. Now on to one of my favorite things in the world, Yowie. Now we have four Yowies to look at today, including this blue one that's named nap which is definitely what i'm going to be doing after recording this video mm. i wonder who's in this one ah it's a duplicate so this is one of the ones that we opened up last time this is the bee eating badger which is still not concerned in the slightest now we have this green one which is named crag hopefully this one won't be a duplicate this one's new it looks like a fox oh just a pet fox he is also the least concerned. What is with everybody today? Foxes use their tails to help with balance. They also use them to fly. Oh my god, this guy is so cute. This has to be one of my favorite Yaois that I've ever opened up. Look how happy he is. And now we have a veteran fighter. This is Rumble again, and hopefully we don't get a duplicate from him. Timothy, you're gonna make me fat, buddy. What the fuck is that? It's Squish! I was wondering where Squish was. I mean, they we didn't have one of her today, but here she is. So instead of a real life animal, we got one of the Yaoi characters. We got Squish, who is the guardian of the waterways. I mean, this is definitely a surprise. I thought that it was all gonna be animals. I didn't know that this was even a possibility. And the last one that I got kind of looks like a pumpkin. His name is Boof. Oh, okay, so this is a new one. So this is a Sunda Kalugo, and he's most definitely not a lemur. And just like everybody else today, he is also the least concerned. He's really cute, a lot of cool sculpting. I mean, not as much paint and detail as the fox. The fox might actually be my favorite other than Squish. Now I found this other egg loosely in the packaging and me and Timothy talk a lot, so I'm not sure if like one of them melted or something. It could have been like the chocolate Squish. I have no clue, but. This one has... So we have a duplicate of the Not Lemur. Timothy also sent me over this Care Bears Unlock the Magic Monopoly board game. Now I believe that this is an Australian exclusive and I can't wait to play it at my friend Shibria's house because she's always trying to get me to come over for game night. He also sent me over this Self Care Bears notepad and look who it has on it. And it's just a bunch of blank paper, so. I can do whatever I want with it. I can draw in it, I can write in it. I can write scripts for videos like I need to do more often. It's got a lot of the original artwork from the 1980s era of Care Bears. These are all very great ways of taking care of yourself. He also sent me over this Good day, Bobby. 
illustrated book from Scholastic. I remember Scholastic from the book fairs that they used to have at my school whenever I was a kid. It basically tells the story of Barbie going on an adventure with her friend Lily in Australia. It includes some very stereotypical Australian wildlife like a kangaroo and a drop bear. Lily is a very pretty character. I think that if Mattel were ever to make an Australian exclusive Barbie, it should be of her. Timothy also sent me over this beautiful print of an art piece that he finished in 2015 of an eagle. And also a copy of this coloring book that he illustrated called The Wildest Dreams, which has a very sad backstory. This book, Timothy dedicated to his grandfather that had passed away at the time. And every day for a month, he would illustrate a different art piece for this coloring book in honor of his grandfather and how he was feeling on that particular day. He actually started a Kickstarter for this coloring book to be produced. And um, I think he said that he has maybe 10 copies left of it. I mean, this is some really beautiful artwork. And I really love this one with the unicorn. It definitely reminds me of one of my favorite animated movies of all time. The Last Unicorn. Yeah, there are 30 unique illustrations in this book, and I really appreciate you giving me one of your final copies of your book, Timothy. Thank you so much. So speaking of books, Timothy also sent me over these handmade 1-6 scale miniature versions of famous novels, including J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter. I mean, he printed out, like, these are real words. Like, this is the book. Like, like this is the book. Like, the front, the back, the side. I mean, these are really, really well done. I mean, Thank you so much. This one I personally requested, and you'll see why here in a minute. This is a miniature version of Stephanie Meyer's Twilight. And he also made me a miniature version of his coloring book, which is good because my dolls can now color with me. It's got all the illustrations in there. That's so wild. And since we're on the subject of miniatures, Timothy also sent me over this Micro Machines duck from Batman. This miniature cup of ramen that actually has noodles on the inside. These two circular containers of ramen that also have noodles on the inside. This dream catcher charm that I'm definitely gonna have to hang up somewhere. This little peach accessory that came with one of like a like a fruit themed Barbie or something. I don't really remember what her name was, but I think I'm gonna make this into like a little bag for a Barbie or something. And also these two really cool miniature Spice Girls figures. Now, I don't know a whole lot about the Spice Girls. I love these little figures. Imagine if we got miniature fashionistas like this. That would be so cool. Oh. Shit. But I think this is Baby Spice, and this one is Scary Spice, I think. I mean, look how detailed their boxes are. I've actually thought about buying the dolls that come with these just for these little accessories. He also sent me some clothes, including these orange swim trunks. These are really cool. They must have came off of an early 2000s beach party. They just kind of give me that vibe. And also this dress. I have no idea what doll this came from. And also Fashionista Raquel's silver and black pants. So that's really cool. Now, the final two items that he sent me are actually meant in box dolls, the first one being the Barbie Signature Inspiring Women series of Florence Nightingale. Now I don't collect a lot of the dolls from this collection, but they do have some very unique face sculpts. This is actually the first Barbie that I've ever owned with the Louboutin head mold. I mean, I can see why they don't use it for Playline because she does look very miserable, but she definitely fits the picture very well. I mean, her outfit is extremely well made, but I'm probably not gonna keep her in this. I'm more than likely gonna transform her into my own character. She's got such a stern expression, my God. I love how all the dolls in this collection are articulated. They have movement at the shoulder, at the elbow, at the wrist, at the head, at the hip, and um, she has some tape around her knee, but her knee also bends. Some of the dolls in this collection actually have a made to move body, and those ones are priced just the same as the ones that don't. So Mattel being shady, just like always. In my mind, if you're gonna charge over $15 for a doll, she better be articulated. And her face paint is very clean too, no pixelation at all. And the last doll on the lot is a very special one because it's actually one of my grail dolls and I am so excited for her. You can probably already see who it is. It's Alice. Timothy was so, 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 so kind to go out of his way to get me Alice from the Twilight Saga. I mentioned in my review of the other Twilight dolls that Alice was one of my grail Barbie dolls. And I am so, so happy that Timothy was willing to buy her for me. I can handle myself. You know what? Fuck Edward. Fuck Jacob. 
I'm Team Alice. I want there to be like an alternate version of Twilight where it just replaces Edward with Alice. I sadly don't know who this actress's name is and I unfortunately don't know her from anything other than Twilight, but she definitely deserved a bigger role in that movie. I mean, she can see the future for crying out loud. Alice uses the Generation Girl Lara head mold, which was dated 1998. I think her name was like Marie or something in other countries, but Laura is very commonly used for collector Caucasian Barbies, so expect to see a lot of her. Alice has this gorgeous facial screening and this adorable pixie cut, and Doll Junk was very right about her knees. She definitely doesn't have the same type of knee articulation as Bella did. She just has a bend and snap knee, but... That's okay, I'll be getting another body for her. Speaking of which, Doll Dirt on Instagram found some knockoff Integrity Toys bodies on AliExpress that fit the Twilight Girls really well, so I'll have to buy one for Alice. Alice's outfit actually comes in three pieces. The vest and the blouse are actually two different pieces. The vest velcros in the back, whereas the blouse just sort of slips over her. There's a lot of really cool detail on that vest, including the collar and also this ribbon detailing. And also the blouse has some really cool black threading on it, so it makes it look really vintage. She also has a silver ribbon necklace, and I think that that's supposed to be the crest. You know how everybody has crests in Twilight, so I think that's the Cohen crest. And she also wears these black flats. Okay, I was wrong about the blouse. The blouse actually has metal snaps at the front, so that's just another added level of detail. Oh, and the pockets of the back of her pants are actually functioning pockets, so... That's really cool. Thank you so, so much, Timothy, for hooking me up with one of my Grail dolls. I probably wouldn't have had her for a long time otherwise. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today as I open up this awesome package that was sent to me from Timothy's Toy Therapy, aka Aussie Barbie Boy. Be sure to follow him on Instagram and YouTube. I'll have them both linked down below. If you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy my cock tent. And I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.